The very first iteration of a small council for a king of the Seven Kingdoms was formed by the first king to unite the place. Surprise, surprise. It was a little different compared to what we see with Robert sitting on the Iron Throne. Some changes were made over the 300 years. Aegon the Conqueror's select group of advisors was stretched a little too thin. When Aegon Targaryen was crowned, he decided four guys were all that he needed. No Master of Whisperers, no Lord Commander, not even a Grand Maester. To his oldest supporters, he gave new honors. Daemon Valyrian, Lord of the Tides, was named Master of Ships, in command of the Royal Fleet. Tristan Massey, Lord of Stone Dance, was named Master of Laws. Crispian Celtigar, Master of Coin. And Oris Baratheon, he proclaimed to be my shield, my stalwart, my strong right hand. Thus Baratheon is reckoned by the Maesters, the first King's Hand. Two familiar sounding names, two new. Tristan Massey, the first Master of Laws, was under the Stormlands rule before Aegon's conquest, but felt he was closer to the foreign Targaryens than the Storm King. Before dragons even took to battle, showing Westeros what they were made of, Le Tristan believed in the Targaryen's cause. His gamble paid off big for him and his family. The Celtigars, not so recognizable as the iconic Baratheons and Valerians, but like both of them, how Celtigar have origins in the now ruined Valerian Peninsula. The Celtigars and Valerians were the only houses sworn to Targaryens when they were just lords of Dragonstone. The Targaryens ruled the sky with dragons, with their closest allies, the Valyrians, ruling the seas aboard their powerful fleet. Lord Daemon Valyrian was the best choice for position like Master of Ships. The nepotism was just a coincidence here with Aegon's mom being a Valyrian. Though Daemon died in the middle of the conquest, fighting in the Vale's waters, his son Aethon replaced him, starting a tradition of Valyrians holding the sea of Master of Ships. Oris Baratheon being named Hand of the King was full-blown nepotism. He was the king's half-brother, and believed to be the king's one and only close friend. Oris, who took out the last storm king for the Targaryens, was a good fighter. The Baratheon's tough reputation trickles down from the founder Oris. But Hand of the King was way too serious of a job for someone so rash and battle-hungry. The title of Hand of the King wasn't even created early on. Aegon just called his childhood companion Oris his, his right hand. Besides the responsibilities that came with these four positions, Aegon and his sister wives, along with the newly formed small council, had two pressing matters. Tying the realm together under Targaryen rule and dealing with Dorne, the only kingdom left stubbornly fighting back. The Iron Throne was forged with fire and steel and terror, but once the throne had cooled, it became the seat of justice for all of Westeros. The reconciliation of the Seven Kingdoms to Targaryen rule was a keystone of Aegon's policies as king. To this end, he made great efforts to include men, even a few women, from every part of the realm in his court and councils. His former foes were encouraged to send their children, chiefly younger sons and daughters, as most great lords desired to keep their heirs close to home. Except Aegon filled his small council with people close to him. The characters from other families became cupbearers or handmaids. A seat or two could have been given to someone like a high tower or the high septum himself. Aegon's sisters decided to meddle with other great houses' affairs by playing matchmaker, helping betroth the Stark to an Aaron, a Lannister to a Redwine, that sort of thing. Those efforts paid off with every family worshipping Aegon, though it's mainly because their king was extraordinary, a perfect character, even more perfect than Rhaegar Targaryen, a dragon rider of the largest beast, one of the best fighters, and intelligent. He began speaking with various maesters over the years on his travels to understand each of the Seven Kingdoms' customs and traditions. Plus, he did have his own maester on Dragonstone. But in 5 AC, some years after the small council's formation, he requested the Citadel send over an archmaester. There's only a handful of archmaesters. Each one is the leading expert of a field of study. All the archmaesters voted amongst themselves and picked the old Alder, Archmaester of History, to send to Aegon himself. He was named the first Grand Maester on a small council. He was a little too old, however, and had to be replaced only a year later since he died, being replaced by Grand Maester Lyons. He was old too. That usually comes with being a lead expert. In 7 AC, we have the first resignation. Oris got himself captured while leading ground troops into Dorne for an invasion. Aegon ransomed him back, but his brother was missing his sword hand. This changed Oris. The only thing on his mind now was how to exact revenge. So he left King's Landing, an angry and bitter man, to live in Storm's End, the castle he won in the conquest for the Targaryens. Dorne was looking like an issue the king and his small council couldn't solve. Lord Edmund Tully was brought in to replace Oris as the king's right hand. The Tullys joined in on Aegon's conquest very early, not as early as the Masseys, but they were the first of the Riverland Lords. Pretty good choice, but in just two years, Aegon would have to find yet another replacement. 
Lord Edmund served from 7 to 9 AC, but when his wife died in childbed, he decided that his children had more need of him than the realm, and begged leave to return to the Riverlands. Alton Celtigar, Lord of Claw Isle, replaced Tully, serving ably as Hand until his death from natural causes. Another Celtigar on the small council. The situation with Dorne was heating up. The Dornish managed to kill a dragon rider in disguise for the first time. Aegon's favorite sister wife of the two was sniped out of the air. Aegon and Visenya made sure all the castles burned, but an assassin was sent for the king return when walking the streets of King's Landing. The keen-eyed Visenya saved her younger brother, but made sure the king formed a king's guard that would defend him from here on out. In 10 AC, Visenya selected Corlys Valerion, Aegon's younger brother, to be Lord Commander of the First King's Guard, and adding him to the small council. That makes six seats now, two added from the initial four. Aegon would never have a Master of Whispers as his spy master. There's nothing written about this Corlys. Odds are he was just above average, combat-wise, mainly selected for his last name. But if Visenya handpicks you, you gotta be at least a little competent, and he never had to be replaced, so he was good at staying alive while defending Aegon. Unlike the Grand Maesters, Old Man Lyons died after serving seven years, being replaced by Grand Maester Gawain. None of them could figure out what to do with Dorne. The king just decided to stop invading after receiving a letter from the Martells. The terms within the letter were shared with no one else. No other issue remained at court during Aegon's 37 year long reign. It was all peaches and daisies. Yeah, there were a couple more changes in the hand of the king department, thanks to some deaths, but nothing too scandalous. The king's peace was tied to Aegon though. His sons fought the realms for the entirety of their reigns, because they were nothing like their perfect conqueror father. His younger son, Megwar, introduced a mistress of whispers to the small council. But the institution of a king's small council did not come into its full bloom until the reign of King Jaehaerys the Conciliator, Aegon's grandson. Think that just means their roles were solidified on paper. These were the final six on Aegon's council, but these four characters make up the very first small council. Latris and Massey may have been the only one to serve the full 37 years. Crispian is a bit of a mystery for now. His son Alton, who served a few years as Hand of the King, was head of the family, so likely an unnamed master of coin did eventually replace the deceased Crispian. Overall, a very detailed small council, fitting for such a major figure in the story. From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see y'all next week.